So we're out again here in the beautiful state of Utah and today we're going to be shooting hamsters. I mean ground squirrels, sorry. <laughs> um, we've got guys from all over the world here. Probably the closest thing you get to like the ultimate air gun get together hunting experience. We've got a bunch of guys from South Africa, air hunters. We've got the guys from, from Sideshot, the Utah air guns van here with some of the Utah air guns guys. And we've got Bo from Australia, Giles from England. It's just one big shooting party. So we're gonna have a lot of fun. We got uh, a whole bunch of guns we're gonna set up and and uh, see if we can take some long shots out to you know 200 meters plus and then obviously some closer shots as well. But let's get to it and let's see how we do. We're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I know. You didn't bring a banjo, did you? No. <laughs> Taking the I got, team with a banjo. I got, me, I got me by it, didn't I? I put one wheel down. A, that's a squirrel hole, obviously, or whatever. I put one wheel down there and nearly smashed my own teeth out. I know, I saw the head. I'm, like, I'm like, what was that? You've left all your makeup on the windscreen, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. got set up here and then you know just been ranging out there for the squirrels uh, just first shot for the day I'm shooting uh, Nielsen 36 grain hollow point slugs uh, 25 caliber and um, he was 200 plus 203 is what I ranged him at out there and uh, wasn't for sure if I hit him I saw him go down but when you reviewed the scope cam footage headshot right to his head um, so pretty awesome that slugs can reach out that far effortlessly and and take down squirrels so pretty awesome Let me show you my setup here because it's pretty different to what I use at home, although there's some similarities. Um, I'm, I've borrowed Justin Jacobson's gun. Obviously, Justin's owner of Utah Air Guns, so he's got it pumped out quite nicely. It's a special edition gold impact, two 580cc bottles, so that's more than a litre of air. We've got a Night Force ATAC R on top. We've got a Craffin and Lift butt pad here and Bowpod Rail Extender. We're shooting 25 caliber, 36 grain Nielsen slugs. And these things have a really high BC. Um, we've measured the BC at like 0.13 or something like that. So we're shooting out to 250 yards, no problem. And the last thing I want to show you here is Sabre Tactical. We've got a cheek razor over here, cheek rest razor. And we've got a, a cocking lever that can be switched from the right hand side to the left hand side. So we're gonna talk about Sabre Tactical in a moment. It's something something new that you guys will really wanna hear about, especially you lefties who wanna shoot a left hand impact. Um, I think you're gonna to wanna to see this. The Mirage made it really difficult to see out at long range and we sometimes struggled to get parallax perfect on the scope cam at close range but that didn't stop us from taking shots and we took some absolute crackers, even past 250 yards. The nice thing about ground squirrel hunting is that you can get feedback from the dust and hold accordingly for a follow-up shot. So these are the ground squirrels um, here in Utah. Apparently these are Wyoming ground squirrels. You can see how small they are compared to the ground squirrels we shoot in South Africa. Really tiny, they're almost like Russian dwarf hamsters. <laughs> so they're really, really small. And as you can see, they don't have the big fluffy tails that the South African ground squirrels have. Obviously the ground squirrels in South Africa are used to more heat, so the fluffy tails protect them from the sun. These guys have to survive out here in really cold conditions, so they don't really need that. So we've got the, the Southern Hemisphere crew up here. We've got Rolf down there and Karat from Air Hunters in South Africa. 
We've got Bo Ricketts from Precision Varminting Australia. So yeah, the guys from, we, we've probably come the furthest out of, out of anyone uh, that's out here this week. So. We've got all the weird accents here. <laughs> yeah, we've got all the weird <laughs> all accents and all the language differences, like, you know, <coughs> biscuits and gravy mean something very different to us down in the Southern Hemisphere <laughs> to what they mean here. But it's good to be together and experiencing you know, all the different uh, cultures and different accents and all of that, but we all speak shooting, so we're going to get along just fine. It took me a while to get used to the drop, having used a different setup back at home, but I got used to it after a while and managed to take some really good shots and Thane and Vil took some fantastic shots on camera as well. So you guys all remember Shane Keller? He's a name that's very well known in the industry. Shane yes, uh, won Extreme Ventures the year that I came second, and we both worked yeah, that was on, awesome. the, on the Aztec scopes. Yeah, the reticle together. So worked yeah, out well for Shane's us. Both good, that year. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we never we won't complain, are we? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Shane's out here. Uh, we're gonna have a blast. Some, yeah, we're gonna set up now. So this is gonna be awesome. Yeah, I'm excited. Some some pre pre PRS and and pre uh, speed shooting practice. That's right. Good, hopefully that's the case. I already hear him out here chirping like crazy. So yeah, yeah. It looks like it'll be a good day. For awesome sure. stuff. Heck yeah. <laughs> So there's a few awesome uh, things about being out here in Utah again. Number one, most importantly, is seeing guys that I don't get to see the rest of the year. You know, coming out to a, a big event like the Rocky Mountain Egg Challenge, you get to see guys from Australia, from here in the States, um, guys from Sweden, Giles from the UK, and obviously my South African friends as well. So, you know, it's like everyone from all over the world coming together, which is fantastic. And obviously the other good thing is we've got the freedom to shoot 25 and 30 caliber, which I can't do in South Africa. That means I get to see the fruits of my labor with the 25 caliber slugs. You know, I worked on the 25 caliber slug barrels, but aside from shooting them indoors at the FX factory, I haven't got a chance to use it. So that's what I'm doing today. And obviously just to see the 30 calibers as well and you know, get used to shooting them a bit before the competition. I'm using a 30 cal in the competition. So it's something I'm gonna to want to practice with a bit. But yeah, great to be out here. A lot of ground squirrels popping up. You can hear the shots going off. So I think we, it should be a good day. <laughs> Okay, so here's someone that you guys may not have heard about yet. This yeah. is my friend Bo Ricketts from Australia. This is the first time I'm actually meeting him in person, but we've been chatting on, on Facebook Messenger for a really long time. Yeah, Bo, basically, that. you get um, basically like contract work doing pest control jobs. Yes, in Australia, um, right? in Australia um, I'm what's called a VPAC. It's a vertebrate pest animal controller. Um, I have special licenses and permits that actually allow me to discharge firearms in schools uh, down the main street of towns. I was just telling the guys a story about laying on my back and shooting birds off a church steeple and having the birds come down and land on top of me. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I've been doing that for a few years now and uh, just sort of started kicking up the social media thing and met these guys and these guys are absolute legends. Like uh, I've spent the last five years watching these guys and then to meet them in person and they're like, they're 10 times better in person than you are <laughs> online. Yeah, so, so really good. So the idea is, I mean, Bo's got some really cool opportunities in a, a place that I've always wanted to go visit. So the idea is that at some point I want to fly out to Australia and, and you know, obviously I would have to organize all the correct permits and stuff as well to yeah, join Bo. Yeah, we're working Bo, on but, that already. But we're going to work it out and, yep. and um, yeah, hopefully I can go out then we can make some awesome videos together and that should be fantastic. So if you want to see that, put the comments down below and it should be really good. That will be Looking fat. forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's two standing really tall. One just ducked down, there's still one standing really tall. He's 123 yards. So you'll need to go to the second hash mark down from your center reticle. Thank you, Thank you 
hit it for four. So for some matcha in Utah, and it's beautiful today. Um, yeah, shooting some ground squirrels, got a few, missed a few, but having a great time, made a whole lot of cool guys. And yeah, first time shooting a 30 caliber, having an awesome time. Shout out to you. My setup here is actually really cool. As you can see, I'm on a like a swiveling bench. So I've got quite a wide um, section of field here that I can look at. And obviously the other guys are shooting in other directions. Um, it is tricky though, because the ground squirrels have a lot of energy and they kind of pop up and run around and move around. So you can be ranging one and then you try to get on it and it's either a different squirrel or it's in a different place. And it's really, really tricky. If I had something like a 204 Ruger or 22 250, you could basically just aim dead on as you see it and blast it but it's not that simple with the air guns, it's tricky. Um, but it's good practice for the upcoming competition. So we're enjoying it and we're learning and getting better as we go. And we've taken some nice long shots out to 250 yards, which is awesome. So I'm really happy having a good time. I think we're gonna move on to another spot soon, but let's see how it goes. The new spot we planned to move to had an elevated position where we'd be able to set up in a prone position and in theory this should help us spot more squirrels as well and everyone was pretty keen to get down to business once again. So we've moved out to a, a new spot here, um, it's actually the same spot where I filmed the ground squirrel hunt last time I came here. We've set up on the on a little ridge over here overlooking a kind of dry deserty field over there and there's ground squirrels popping up and running around so we just kind of as soon as we spot them get a range quickly and see who can hit it first it's very difficult very very tricky we've taken a few shots at 120 meters or so and missed and thanks just got one a bit further than actually but um yeah it's uh, it's difficult but it's fun so hopefully we can get a few here too Because I don't have turret tape set up for 25 caliber, I had to do a calculation on Strelok every time I took a shot, and this was time consuming, but the wind turned out to be the trickiest part. Ooh, that was so close. Scroll at 123 meters. Elevation was perfect, but yeah, I just didn't hold enough for the wind on the first shot, missed it, held for the second shot, but must have just gone just to either side of him and I think I just missed him. But it was very close, so hopefully we get some more popping up and I can smash them. I got a few more opportunities at the same mound once again, but the wind through the valley kept changing and I missed them all, either left or right. All super close though. Oh. Fan had a pretty cool tripod setup, and from a sitting position, he took some awesome shots at long range. Right there. Got him. All right, none of you guys know this yet, but uh, myself, my dad, and, and Donnie from Donnie FL, uh, we started a company called Saber Tactical. So, um, really cool company. Um, as you know, we've made a lot of neat things like the high cap mag for this uh, for the impact and some other products, the side shot scope cam, um, a lot of different things. Well, to put all those things under one umbrella um, and come out with more and more products for you guys, we came out with this cheek riser under Saber Tactical um, and a double ambidextrous caulking lever. So basically, it's super super simple. Just loosen these screws, pop the pins. Pull this, stick it on the other side, pop them back in, and you're ready to go. So if you need to do some really fast shooting, you can keep your hand on the trigger and fire. 
and then I'll have my Allen wrenches on me, but as well as this will raise up and down, you know, depending on your scope height. So it just makes it more customized. Yeah, really cool product coming out here really soon. Um, you'll see them at the Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge. So we'll have those on the prize table, um, the raffle, raffle table, and then as well as a lot of guys' guns. You can see in the following clips just how high my scope is mounted. The angled rail helps a lot with long range shooting and normally this would be really uncomfortable but the cheek piece riser allows it to fit my cheek perfectly. And the 25 kill slugs seem to be shooting really well. I took some time to test accuracy on small rocks around 150 yards away and it was spot on. <laughs> Gone. You'll see that this gun had Ernest Rowe's high power kit installed as well, which allowed it to push 36 grain slugs well over 960 feet per second with minimal rig pressure. The only problem with these dimple nose slugs is that they didn't expand quite as well as the hollow points and sometimes just seem to pencil straight through. As the day started to come to an end and all the jet lag started to hit, I put my gun away and just spent some time filming Thane, who still had plenty of energy as always, and he took some awesome long shots. Oh, was that him on top of the mound? Yeah, very top of that bush. Ooh, I hit him. Got him. It's like 157, I think. 157? Yeah. Just hammered him. Well, the first shot got him, and then the second shot, as he was dragging himself over there, hit him and just, he just started flipping everywhere. He's, he was down. I thoroughly enjoyed the day out with my international family. These guys really are like brothers to me and the two or three times a year that I get to see them at competitions and trade shows are real highlights for me. I'm hoping to get them down to South Africa sometime to hunt ground squirrels, dussies and monkeys. If you like that idea, please let me know in the comments. Hopefully there's enough interest to make that happen in the near future. For now, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next adventure back in South Africa.